The idea was to show you places my family loves to visit. We have spent decades discovering hidden gems like this one. Time stands still at the R.M. Brooks General Store in Rugby, Tennessee. How are you? This is exactly what the store looked like in the 1920s, right down to the post office and the potbelly stove. The only difference is Tiffany Terry is now serving an award-winning fried bologna sandwich, mm. and it's only 325. That's so good. To me, there's it's like a step back in time, and and I always tell people like I'm the countryside, and a mile down the road is the English side, and so you get the best of both worlds. <laughs> Rugby in Morgan County was a utopian community started by famous British author Thomas Hughes in 1880. He bought 75,000 acres for British second sons, men who would lose all inheritance to older brothers. Rugby was his pet because Hughes was a second son and he knew exactly how hard it was for those young sons to move their way up through the world. Today you can tour this historic town thanks to the historic Rugby, a living Victorian village. There's a charming schoolhouse, the old printing press, Thomas Hughes' home with almost all original furnishings, and one of the original inns. This is where the British pioneers would come and spend three or four months. It was a boarding house. They would wait here while their homes were being built. And the crazy thing is now you can stay here as well overnight in the same Victorian parlor, in the same Victorian rooms. There's more. The stunning 1887 Episcopal Church, original right down to the paint. All of that was painted with milk paint 130 years ago, and it's never been retouched. No matter where you see it in Christ Church, you literally see the same thing they saw 130 years ago. And then there is the magnificent library. The oldest Victorian free library in America, a nearly intact 7,000 original volumes. It was a magnificent beginning, but Utopia failed because British gentlemen fell short in one critical area here in Tennessee. It's because they couldn't farm, and some of them weren't actually willing to learn how to farm. We have accounts of, of those young Englishmen out hoeing in the fields with a parasol in one hand. Rugby survived because other people moved in who were willing to do the hard work. People like Linda Brooks-Jones, who runs the Gray Gables Bed and Breakfast and Dinner. That's right, a night's lodging comes with a big southern breakfast and a plateau gourmet dinner. Tonight we eat the same dinner she served former President Jimmy Carter. The recipes are different than country cooking. They still have that taste and that feel of home cooking, but um, I hope I add just a little bit of ingredients that makes it different. Two meals and a big room for $149 a night, and there's more. If you're lucky, you can join the locals for some Irish road bowling. Roll cannonballs down the middle of the street. And we go down to the bend of the road. Go, go, go. We come back up, and whoever gets back to the starting point and has less strokes, that's the winning team. And if a car happens to interrupt the game, do what kids do. If this isn't enough, rugby sits on the Big South Fork National River and Recreation Area. Miles of hiking trails and lots of water. My wife and I end our trip with a hike down to the gentleman's swimming hole, where those proper Brits frolicked on hot summer days. I think that rugby is one of the best kept secrets in Tennessee. Every time I tell a friend about this place, they want to know more, they write it down, they can't believe they've never heard about it. It is this fascinating secret history. It's this tiny town in the middle of nowhere with this wonderful storyline that you've never heard before. What we didn't show you was the dark sky and quiet nights. Talk about relaxing. Just go. I'm Dennis Ferrier, Fox 17 News.